I have received a letter from the Honourable Member for North Sydney proposing that a definite matter of public importance be submitted to the House for discussion, namely the failure of the government to insulate the economy against the risk of natural disasters. I call upon those members who approve of the proposed discussion to rise in their places. The Member for North Sydney. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And I'm immensely pleased that the Treasurer has decided to debate me in the Chamber on this occasion. Because previously he has contracted that out to the Assistant Treasurer, uh, who is, in, is mysteriously not here. And uh, it should come as no surprise that much of the work of the Treasurer these days is contracted out. Uh, the Prime Minister just contracted out. Uh, the financial integrity of the recovery in Queensland to a former Liberal Finance Minister, which must be just a touch humiliating for him, but we move on. Mr Speaker, uh, last year the Treasurer said that his banking reforms would deliver uh, lower interest rates over time. Uh, banking overhaul will bring down rates, says Swan, uh, and he uh, he, think, he went on to uh, say uh, that uh, essentially uh, the banking reforms that he announced last year will bring interest rates down. Uh, the Treasurer has previously said that consumer confidence is fragile. He's previously said that retail sales are not as strong as we would like. Uh, he has also, uh, on numerous occasions, in fact more than 25 occasions, warned that the bank should not be go, go beyond the Reserve Bank and increasing interest rates. Mr Speaker, Australia is not immune to the challenge of natural disaster. On this occasion it has come in threes, uh, with flood, uh, with fire and with cyclone. But Australia seems to always now, at a Christmas period, suffer some sort of disaster that inevitably will have an impact on the Australian budget. The question is how prepared are we from a fiscal perspective for that challenge? How prepared are we? And over the next four years this government is going to spend $45 billion on interest alone to repay the debt that has come as a result of deficit budgets over the last few years and into the next few years. And over the next four years, this government is going to spend, uh, and hopefully they won't get the opportunity to spend all of it, uh, $1.5 trillion, $1.5 trillion, uh, which is a huge amount of money. And at this crucial moment, we are arguing the case that now is not the time to punish Australian households with a flood levy, now is not the time to raise the burden on everyday households with an additional cost uh, to the rising interest rates that the government has contributed to with its reckless waste in spending that uh, are going to come about, the challenges associated with higher inflation and higher vegetable prices, higher fruit prices, as we've seen in recent months and will see over the next few months. And the households are also going to face the impact indirectly, but in some cases even directly, of a mining tax and a carbon tax. So all of these factors coming together over the next 18 months will have a profound impact on the cost of living of everyday Australians. And more and more data to add to that burden uh, more and more data indicates that electricity prices are going to rise substantially over the next 12 months, even without a carbon tax. Water prices are going to rise substantially over the next 12 months as states seek to recover some of the costs associated with infrastructure. And in addition, of course, the states themselves, in their ever-growing search for new revenue, will be increasing taxes and charges on everyday Australians. Now, even with an unemployment rate of around 5%, even with a growing economy, 
The impact on everyday Australians of every dollar matters. It really does matter. Because those people are now facing charges that their parents never had to pay. Significant toll road charges, for example. Additional costs of schooling that my parents, for example, never had to pay, yet I, of course, and generations beyond will have to pay. Even university fees and so on. The additional costs on everyday households is something this government does not understand. Right. And it is best illustrated by the fact that when asked a simple question in question time today, how many Australians are going to pay the flood tax the Treasurer didn't know? He didn't know. How many Australian households would be affected? How many individuals would have to pay an additional levy? And he is the Treasurer of Australia and he didn't even have the brief in his file. He turned to Jenny Macklin and said, do you know? And she shook her head. And this guy is meant to be running the country. No wonder, no wonder the Prime Minister rang up John Fay and said, help us to stop the waste. No wonder the Prime Minister rang a Liberal Finance Minister and said, please oversee Wayne Swan. I don't trust him with the money. If the Prime Minister doesn't trust the Treasurer with a recovery in Queensland, how can she have him deliver a budget in May? Well, we know what's going to happen. Hello, Peter. This is Julia. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help. We've given you an AC, but we need you to deliver a budget. <laughs> well, I can see what's going to happen. The Prime Minister is going to be making a series of calls over the next 12 months. She'll be ringing uh, the Leader of the Opposition saying, come back as Health Minister. Yeah. She'll be ringing Peter Reith uh, to come back and fix the wharves. She'll be ringing Philip Ruddock and saying, come back and stop the boats. Oh, my goodness. If the Prime Minister doesn't trust her own government, how can we trust her? $350 billion a year. An economic recovery in Queensland. She proudly announces that the Treasurer is going to lead the recovery effort. And because she doesn't trust the Treasurer, she rings up a Liberal Finance Minister to make sure there's no waste. Only the Liberals stop the waste. It's as simple as that. Only the Coalition has the courage to stop the waste. And you know what? What surprised me most was poor old Lindsay Tanner down in Melbourne with his abacus waiting for the phone to ring. Still waiting. And he was the one that rang the bell on the BER, wasn't he? He was the one that said, Julia, it doesn't stack up. And of course, we know what happened to him. But it, Mr Speaker, it, it, defies, it defies logic to expect that a government would have to revert to the integrity of its political opponents in order to survive on the Treasury benches. I mean, can you imagine John Howard after Cyclone Larry ringing up Ralph Willis and saying, mate, I need your help? <laughs> can you imagine that? I don't trust my own Treasurer. I don't trust my own Finance Minister. I'm going to ring up Ralph Willis or John Dawkins or Paul Keating. <laughs> Paul Keating. We miss Paul Keating. And I bet Julia Gillard does as well. Mr Deputy Speaker, there is some economic challenge that we have to deal with. The first challenge is to get the budget back to surplus. And why? Because that takes some of the upward pressure off interest rates. Getting the budget back to surplus means that you don't have to spend $45 billion every four years just on interest, just on interest. It means for $45 billion you can rebuild Queensland about eight times over, eight times over. It also means the fact that you can deliver the programs that you really want to deliver. The hypocrisy of this government is exceptional. For the Treasurer to stand up in this place and talk about our deferred spending cuts, you know what? The Treasurer has $1.5 billion of deferred spending cuts as some of his so-called cuts, just like the $80 billion of so-called savings, when nearly half of the so-called savings from the Labor Party and government have in fact been tax increases. <laughs> so now the logic of the Labor Party is that if they increase taxes for Australians, it increases savings for those Australians. It is illogical as illogical 
as the rhetoric of the government itself. And out of all of this, out of all of this, even with Australia's greatest terms of trade in modern times, most favourable terms of trade in modern times, even with a strong growth rate, even with an unemployment rate of around 5 per cent, even with the coalition having the courage, isn't that right, having the courage to lay down now $52 billion of savings, even with that, this government hasn't got the courage to default to what every Australian family has to do when it's facing an economic challenge, when it's facing a financial challenge. Every Australian family has to look at the family budget and work out how they're going to live within their means. That's what they do. Not this government, not the Labor Party. They default to a new tax. That is the Labor way. Default to a new tax. And over the last three years, they've increased the taxes on cars, they've increased the tax on alcohol, they increased the tax on cigarettes. And now, this year, this year alone, they want to increase the tax on people's income. They want to introduce a new tax on mining and they want to increase and introduce taxes on carbon and electricity. And they want to do that in 12 months. So in the course of four to five years, the Labor Party has shown its true colours. Increased taxes. This government will be defined by its reckless spending. This government will be defined by its determination to increase taxes. This government will be defined by the fact that it hasn't got any ticker. It hasn't got any ticker. Because the starting point for this government after the floods was not to say we will cut first. Their starting point was to say we will tax first. And as the Leader of the Opposition said so eloquently, it's turned out to be a mateship tax. I'd say to you, Mr Deputy Speaker, there is no precedent, no precedent whatsoever, for a government to literally beg the Australian people to donate money to a worthy cause and then afterwards to tax them for the same cause. There's lots of precedents for levies. There's lots of precedents uh, for cuts. But there is no single precedent where you ask Australians to be generous, and they were generous and they are generous, and then after they have done that, when they have given their all, to then go and hit them between the eyes with a new tax. There is no precedent. So for that truck driver I met in Rochester, who gave up his fuel, who gave up his truck for three days of income, to carry away the sodden carpet, the, the wrecked fridges and freezers, the broken furniture from a home I visited in Rochester, that man is now going to have to pay that tax. He's already sacrificed thousands. Or as the member for Brisbane said a little bit earlier, about a small business person in Queensland who has had their business suffer substantial loss and yet now is going to have to pay the tax on top of that. What was the reaction of the Prime Minister? Oh, well, this is a personal income tax increase. The Prime Minister was unable to differentiate between the impact on a family of a small business that has to pay out from the family income the pain associated with the flood and then have to pay out a tax. You know, there are millions of Australians that do not differentiate between their business income and their personal income because they run small businesses. And that's a constituency the Labor Party will never understand. Mr Deputy Speaker, we have had the courage to match our words with deeds by laying down a plan to pay for the $2 billion that the government is going to have to raise with its flood levy, we have been fair dinkum with the Australian people. And there can be a horde of critics about the composition of it, but we have shown the courage that the government does not have. We have shown a determination to preserve the economic credentials, not just of our nation, but in particular of the family home. Because we believe a government should behave no differently, 
no differently in many ways to what Australian families have to do. When there is a challenge, you have to meet it. When the money has to be spent, you spend it. But most significantly of all, when you have to make hard decisions about your family budget, it is only the coalition that has the courage to do just that. We will not run away from hard decisions and now we will not let a weak and insipid Treasurer run away again from making the hard decisions that make life a little bit easier for Australian families. Members, time has expired.